I suppose the question is, what kind of witchcraft is this? Hi, so of course I'm absolutely kidding. This Crow Panel ESP32 does not contain any witchcraft. However, there is definitely some nice little features hidden under this little device. Now, full disclosure, Crow Panel did send this over to me for review. No money has changed hands. They will not get to see this review before I upload it. And my thoughts are going to definitely be my own. So let's just have a very quick whistle stop tour of the Alecro Crow Panel website. So where am I going to find mine? So mine exists under the HDMI, HMI display. So I can basically look at the e-paper series and you can absolutely find my 4.2 inch one just here. So just having a quick brief overview of this, it gives you a little bit about the device. Uh, obviously the fact that the ultra low power, the reflective mode, power off retention, that kind of thing. Uh, a little bit more about the chip. So obviously it's using the ESP um, 32S3 chip. So it does have that really powerful performance. No need for a backlight with these as well, which is quite useful. And then it just gives you a few use cases for some of them here. So you can see like this digital weather station, uh, being able to control um, elements within your home lab. I've never got any of that working so far. And yeah, just kind of gives you a bit of a, an overview of how they sit together. And I mean, the actual display is very crisp and, and, and nice to actually review. So, and again, there's just some of those simple use cases I mentioned. Uh, a nice schematic of the back, so you can see about the GPIO headers, um, where the ground is, and the fact you've got your VCC, um, the boot, the reset, uh, where the ESP32 sits. Um, you've got an option for a battery, the type C, the TF, exit, rotary switch there, which is basically how you control it, and a little bit about it and where to use it. So all the schematics sit in there. Now, the easiest way to kind of find some of the sample information is, and there's the 3D file, so that's probably what I'm looking for to print off my case. Uh, let's have a look at Wiki, though. So Wiki on here will give us everything we're looking for. So there's a little bit about here, everything. Again, it kind of shows you that. But right at the bottom here, we will find our Andrino code for demos and for examples. And these are the ones that I used when I was testing. So let's have a look at this video of the device. And I have deliberately slowed this down as well. So it is on a little bit of slow motion. Now at the back, we do have the area to put a trans flash card. Now I did put a 128 in it. I didn't actually utilize this at any point in time. But if you imagine you could use this to load images on to have those images available. You have the USB-C for power, which is there quite nicely. If you actually look at the front display, I mean, this is obviously with no power on at the moment. So this is set how you would see it. And you can see how crisp that currently sits. And yeah, I mean, the actual thickness of the board is, is not particularly thick. So you think from a perspective of actually putting this inside a little case, it would actually have a very, very low footprint. Now we do have the ESP32 chip there, which is the S3 dev model. Uh, a nice ribbon connector that sits there from, you know, options of connecting it into another device. At this end, we do have a um, battery connection. And then at the very top, we have that GIO header. As you can see there, there is a nice SKU for it. If you want to know what the SKU was for this particular device, it's there on your screen for you. And here we have the rotary switch. Now this rotary switch is what controls it. You'll see that in a moment when I power it on. And at the very top, we have a menu button and an exit button as well. So there's a few different options in there, but they're very tactile, uh, respond very well. So they don't generally have too many problems with utilizing them. So I suppose the real question comes about what happens when you apply power? Now, I am using a very, very low charge um, cable here. So it outputs a maximum of five volts and about one amp, which was more than sufficient to actually power this. Now, you can see when it boots up, you get this nice display, which does change um, viewpoints. Gives a bit, 
information about the fact it is a crow panel. You see the size and that resolution, which is really important. Uh, the flash has 8 meg and 512. Now, when it finally boots up, we are presented with this home page. Now, you will be forgiven to think that this is actually a touch screen because it does give you that indication, but you do need to use the rotary control to move between them. So, when I click on description, You do have to wait for the panel to refresh sometimes. So let's just wait for this to kick in. And when we kick into description this time, what we should see once the panel refreshes, you can see the kind of speed of the device here is a product description and it kind of gives you a little bit about it so it's talking about that uh, dual core 32-bit lxt microprocessor it does have integrated wi-fi and bluetooth functions and uh, obviously the kind of frequency is a 2.4 it's generally designed for iot applications so if you think about what i mentioned about some of the use cases for this is you could absolutely if you could get it to integrate with home assistant for example get it to display some sensor information now unfortunately it doesn't have esp32 home integration as standard um, however there will be some very intelligent people that can use arduino ide to actually build some of this i'm sure but that just gives you a nice little um kind of information about you know what this crow panel esp32 display is and some of these simple use cases so medical equipment industrial control civil electronics automation those are the kind of people that this is designed and aimed at however you know for a home labber as well it does certainly have a few little nice gimmicks so i would intend to use this for say something like a um, element and like i said it does kind of give you that impression that it is a touch screen but it certainly isn't so we need to go back to the menu pressing the menu button and we'll just wait for this to refresh now secondly on here we can go to image if we click on image this will just kind of give you an overview of how the images work and you'll see that it isn't always super responsive so a few clicks are required sometimes i think it's just the way that the rotary device is laid out it's not the cleanest um, it's not almost worst um, but it's just a kind of view of how it looks but if you look at that how that looks from an e-ink perspective that's quite a beautiful little picture that it's got there and you can kind of cycle through some demos so this kind of gives you a bit of an indication of what's achievable with this e-ink display now, I'm not kind of into pencil art, but um, let's put it this way. It can look pretty pretty if you like this sort of thing. So there's something to bear in mind that it can be used for just displaying very simple graphics or even infographics that can be utilized um, within the system. But anyway, this is kind of just a, a whistle stop tour of the device. And the final one I want to show you is the kind of sample data that it gives you for control. So if you look at this, this may look very nice and simple to people that use elements such as smart homes. So you can see here it gives you the option for lamp control. And it's just kind of a bit of a demo of how this would look. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to understand some of the really nice use cases for this device. So let's come back to actually the panel itself. Now, from my perspective, it's very well designed. Uh, the frustration thing for me was I was never sent a acrylic outer for this, which would have been really nice for me to have. I could absolutely 3D print one of these. And once I think I have a bit more time to sit and play with this, I will absolutely try and do what I'm trying to achieve with this. So the good points yeah i can absolutely see the intention for this it's going to be focused on almost like digital signage with low power consumption because obviously look at it from this i can literally have an image static on this with no power so let's think of a you know a shop for example where you may want pricing that can change occasionally can absolutely be done you can you can also generate Wi-Fi signals where you can basically take a Wi-Fi signal um, and upload very different images and have them scroll around. 
So there are some very useful ways to use it. Uh, a digital weather map. Um, when I first thought about the ESP32, uh, I got really excited because I instantly thought, ooh, uh, Home Assistant. Now, annoyingly, it doesn't fully integrate with ESP32 Home. Um, don't get me wrong, there may be some very intelligent people that have got some sensors working on this, and I will persevere and try some more stuff later on in the future. But for me, the actual coding was a little bit frustrating. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, Crow Panel in themselves give you some very useful instructional videos on YouTube, which if you follow along, you should be able to understand. However, they have been produced with AI voice generation, which I find a little bit frustrating, to be honest, because obviously some of it can be lost in translation. So it's just something to be bear in mind. But also some of the sample codes don't actually function. So I had a few challenges getting, let's say, for example, the weather one to work properly because there was some JSON that had some incorrect passing in there, which was causing me a few issues. Now, I did play around with it for a good hour or two trying to actually resolve, but kind of physically gave up on it because I thought this isn't really user-friendly and that's not what I'm trying to review here. I'm actually looking at this from a user-friendly perspective. However, like I said, I will persevere and come back to this at a later date. Now, my long-term goal will be potentially to convert my logo, for example, and stick it in e-ink so I can have a purposely um, displaying e-ink display or maybe actually do a subscriber account uh, ticker on uh, the e-ink display so it updates every time there's one of those. I see a lot of people put these on pegboards, so the SCARDIS type ones you can get from IKEA, or they may just be pegboards in the US. Um, a really nice low power way to kind of put alongside, say, a Raspberry Pi, to basically have a miniature display. Um, you could absolutely also, if you think about it, then use that to you know, give um, performance indication data from stuff like a small, uh, small board computer, for example. Um, like I said, I'm not overly disappointed in this device. Um, it's just, for me, it was a little bit frustrating on the, you know, the coding side. Uh, you use something called Arduino. Um, it, it does work fairly seamlessly. I did manage to push quite a few things to it. I did get some images working, the Wi-Fi refresh part working so I could change the images. But just trying to do some of the more complex stuff like getting the dashboard to come up from Open Weather API uh, was a little bit annoying, to say the least. Um, I'm also in the position now that it's stuck like this. Um, obviously, there's no power on it but I can't find a way to physically reset back to the demo. Now, the use of the memory card, I haven't fully confirmed yet, but um, that might have some particular use in the future. And obviously, it does have a GIO um, output, so we can do some nice stuff with a hat a bit later on. Like I said, I'm not going to fully give up on the device. I'm going to have a bit of a play around. But anyway, um, do get these to go. I mean, they're quite relatively cheap, to be honest. I think this one retails for about $28.99 US dollars. Um, so the equivalent in UK will be pretty much a one-to-one -one translation like they are with most tech things. Um, and you could absolutely do quite a few little interesting things around your home lab or and or business, to be honest. Because if you think of, like I said, the pricing opportunities with this... Um, but also digital signage like meeting rooms, calendar entries, that kind of thing. Um, it does definitely have a fair few use cases. Anyway, you have like this very quick brief review of the Crow Panel ESP32 4.2 inch screen. Then please give us a like, thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you next time.